guys in this video we are going to see an example of ideal transformer here this question is asking us to find out the i1 and i2 currents and we know this is the ideal transformer by looking at this sign this equal kind of sign this is this means this is the ideal transformer okay now here this is similar to the dot convention in mutual inductance but a little bit different okay so when we consider ideal transformer we have to consider these two equations v1 over n1 is equal to v2 over n1 and also actually n2 and also another equation that is i1 n1 is equal to i2 n2 okay these are the equation we have to consider and we have to decide what's going to, whether it's going to be negative or positive it's based on the dot conversion okay so first of all we have to see if the dot for the for this one v1 over n1 over, is equal to v2 over n2 ratio if you want to decide whether it is positive or negative, we have to look at the dot convention. If both of the dot are in positive or if both of the dot are in negative, it means this should be positive, okay? So if one of them in positive and one of them in negative, it means we are going to have negative sign right here. So that's how we decide whether it is negative or positive. And here this I1, N1, I2, N1, here we have to see whether both of them are entering a dot or exiting the dot. If both of them are entering the dot or exiting the dot, we have to have negative. If one of them entering, one of them exiting, it's positive. In our case, one of them is entering the dot and one of them is exiting the dot. So this is going to be positive. We already have this one in positive, okay? And this n1, n2 values is basically this 1 and 4. This 1 is the n1 value and 4 is the n2 values. Based on this one, we can create the equation. Now, if we use the first equation, let's call this one number 1. And here we know that uh, n1 is equal to 1. So we can say v1 over 1. We don't have to write the denominator 1. And that's equal to negative v2 over n2. v2 over n2 is equal to 4, right? So this is going to be v2 divided by 4. So this is the first connection we can make. And from the second equation, we can say i1 times 1. So we can say just i1. That's equal to i2 times n2 that's going to be 4 so 4 i2 so these are the two equations we can create and after that now our purpose is to find the i1 and i2 so we can apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law in these two loops in the first loop if I if we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law let's assume the current direction along the path so along this path and let's assume this one along this path so this is our i1 and this is our i2 and here this current is going through this 2 ohm resistor so that's going to be 2 i1 and after this it's entering this v1 so 2 i1 plus v1 and after this entering through this impedance that's going to be j3 i1 and after that it's entering this voltage now we can say in Kirchhoff's voltage law we can say voltage in is equal to voltage out so this is voltage in so we can equalize these three things to this one that's going to be 30 minus j20 vrms okay so that's good we can just say v okay so this is it for the first loop now for the second loop if we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law so let's put different color so kvl for the second source we are going to have 8 i2 second loop so 8 i2 then it's going through the impedance that's negative j48 i2 and it's off after that it's entering this v2 and it's going from positive to negative so this is going to be positive v2 okay that's going to be equal to zero so these are the two Kirchhoff's voltage law and uh, here we have three unknown variables but we have the connections right we made the connection v1 is equal to negative v2 over 4 i1 is equal to 4 i2 there are many different approach you can do to solve this problem here i am just going to give the final answer uh, I already solved it. I1 is equal to 12 minus J8 ampere and if you calculate I2 you will get 3 minus J12 ampere and that's how we do this kind of problems. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.